Okay, I finally got in. Can you hear us? Yep. Good. Morning, Kathleen. Morning, Kevin. Okay, it's 836. Had a little technical difficulty getting in here, but uh, let's get started. This is the regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Selectmen of the Town of New Canaan for Tuesday, March 8th, 2022, 836 a.m. start. And this is a hybrid meeting. Um, Nick Williams is not on today, right? Correct. So we have a quorum with Kathleen and myself. And first item on the agenda is the minutes um, of the two prior meetings, one on the 16th of February, the other special meeting on February 22nd. Any comments or corrections, Kathleen? No comments, thank you. Okay, so we'll accept those as, as uh, presented. And then uh, public comments. This uh, is a hybrid meeting, so members of the public who are either in the room there or make comment um, on agenda topics, or we will take comments by email sent to bosdistribution at mccainsct.gov, and we will read them before the end of the meeting if any were received. Any comments yet, uh, Tucker? No. Uh, we do have somebody in the audience. Yeah. Oh, so. I'm sorry, somebody on yeah. Zoom. Giacomo? Mr. Landy? Mr. Landy? Um, sure, that's fine. everybody hear me so these comments are related to the minutes which i presume were just approved um and it relates to the issue with regards to um 751 weed in particular the issue with regard to um the uh, first selectman um standing back from that uh discussion and uh, what's the appropriate term here recusing himself from the um from the discussion about that due to his uh being a neighbor of 751 weed so my understanding the first selectman has also said that he has no uh, financial dealings with the proposed developer so i would argue that most um people who are involved in town government have some degree of relationship with the issues that they have uh, that they have before them. Uh, certainly, if you look in the school board, um, most of those people have kids in the school, so they're making decisions about the school all the time. So my question relates to what is the policy with regards to recusal? Uh, how does that work uh, in practice? But more importantly, is that a permanent recusal? And then the person who is recused cannot take part in any um, official decision making both now and in the future? And when would that person be allowed to become active again? Because that person could have uh, other positions on boards, uh, which may have uh, needs to make uh, votes. In particular, I understand the first selectman office has a tie-breaking vote on the board of finance, if I understand that correctly. So then if we have an issue where a person is recused, let's say of a three person committee, which would be board of selectmen, um, who is actually taking over that role on behalf of the board of selectmen? In particular, there have been legal uh, documents prepared by the town on behalf of the town, instructing certain agencies to look at things in certain ways. Lawyers have clients, the lawyers of the town, the client is the town. So who on the town body is actually reviewing these documents that the town lawyers are putting out on their behalf or are town lawyers um, merely exercising their own um, judgment as they're preparing these documents? So my question is, should a uh, individual from the board of selectmen uh, stand in for the first selectmen on issues related to 751 weed and also be engaged as the first selectman would normally be on any issues with regards to preparation of memos. People know that lawyers have many opinions, so lawyers need direction. And it's important that an elected official provides the direction that a first selectman would normally do. That's my question. I'm not expecting an answer. Thank you very much. And Jack, I'll, I'll be happy to answer it while, you, while you're there. So at the time I said I, re I was recusing myself it was because I am statutorily conflicted being a neighbor within 200 yards or whatever the standard is. So the town attorney advised me with respect to the WPCA of which 
being a member of the Board of Finance, I am a member of the WPCA, apparently. It's not entirely clear, but because our charter simply says the Board of Finance is the WPCA. But anyway, the point is that um, I said I would recuse myself from that governmental process. I break a tie on the Board of Finance. Um, I sit ex officio on planning and zoning. Um, then that application came in. So my position right now is I'm recused from the governmental process of participating in, in the, the, those two bodies and their votes. That, that doesn't mean I'm not involved. You, you use the word discussion. I mean, I am the chief executive and I will continue to follow and be involved in this whole process to make sure that the town is properly, from my point of view, um, addressing the issue. And they also said, I'm not disinterested in the process. I reckon I'm a neighbor probably doesn't make me any more opposed to the proposal that has currently been made. Um, seems like everybody in town so far is saying they're opposed to the proposal. So um, if that's confusing, it's probably because it doesn't come up very often. Um, in, uh, but we, we do have two pending applications. And I saw your letter to the various bodies last night or yesterday over the weekend. And um, you have to understand that once you have an application pending before either the WPCA or the Planning and Zoning Commission, they, their members cannot engage in ex parte communications with the public because it's really an adjudicatory process. And they, um, so um, they will receive public comment um, in the case of uh, Board of Finance or the Planning and Zoning Commission if people send emails to the BOF distribution or the planning and zoning distribution, uh, they, th those comments will be read. Um, if you send comments to individual members, the process is that they have to send them to uh, the town planner or to, to the administrative officer, and they will be shared with all members. Um, the whole point is that the process has to be fair. And what's being submitted as comments have to be available to the public and everyone understand, has to understand. There can't be any private conversations, in other words, with any 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 member of a body who's uh, who's going to make a, a, a vote. I will not be making a vote in any process. As, if it comes back to the board of selectmen in some way, we have to. Um, I am involved with the town attorney. Um, I am fully aware of, of the discussions. So, if you have the impression I'm not involved, that that impression is totally wrong. I will not be using my influence in any way with, with any parties, either town employees or, or any members of those bodies that have to decide. So if, uh, I, hope that's, I hope that's clear. Thank you. Just very briefly, my only point is in an area where you are conflicted out, somebody from the town body should stand in in that situation. Uh, I'll be happy to address that, uh, Giacomo, if it comes to that point. I'm right now, uh, my, my understanding is because I am statutorily conflicted on an application, now two applications pending before town bodies. I recuse myself from participating in those, those bodies' discussions in public or private. I don't have private discussions with members of those bodies um, in, the, in, the, in their capacity of, with respect to these applications. Um, and, and I, um, so I, it, I, I- But my point is somebody else from the town then has to stand in on those situations where you're conflicted out. I, I, yeah, well, again, we'll, we'll address that when we get to it. I, you know, we have had discussions, I've had discussions about whether or not, if, who would break a tie on, on the Board of Finance acting as the WPCA. Uh, again, I, we, had, we just have to take it as it goes um, in terms of uh, taking the appropriate action at the time. And if, and if there's a decision to be made, I'll be happy to share with you the decision that has been made. So, thank you for your I know time. you're you're like me, a neighbor, and um, have feelings about the, the the proposal. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Giacomo. And um, I get, uh, moving to the next item on the agenda: the New Canaan Farmers Market update from Lexi, or who's who's there, Patricia? Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. The farmers are ready to come back. Good. Andy Brothers Farm has their greenhouse is growing. Smith yeah. Acres, the 
other plants ready. We're starting earlier this year. We're going to have an Earth Day celebration April 23rd. Bell's Pies is coming back with her award-winning pies. Ox Hollow Farms is bringing up some beef, pork, and other products for the grill. Tracy from Top Silent Oysters and Clams is ready to give her give us her surf. Riverbank Farms with their wide variety of organic produce. Coast Mushrooms is coming back. J and L Orchids had a lot of fun last year. Everybody how to care for their orchids, so she'll be back. Wonderland Jam is busy preparing their preserves, jams, and jellies. <clears throat> Love Project is bring us their backyard raised honey. Bistro du Soleil is cooking up a storm. Bongo and Campachi will be back with his gourmet raviolis. Carrot Top Kitchens is anxious to bring us back their pickles. Gaga Cola, Cloudy Lane are all coming back. So we're looking forward to a great season. The new location worked out really well for traffic and parking. People really enjoyed it. Our special events were a hit. So we're bringing those back. Zucchini Day was kind of fun to see how gardeners, how big their zucchinis got, and the food bank benefit benefited. So we're we're looking forward to a great season. That sounds great. All we need is trees over there in the little yard lot. So ah, you took the words out of my mouth. That's the one <laughs> one complaint: is the trees. We need trees. So if anybody we're, we're, has a suggestion, okay. how we can raise a few trees for the parking lot on Saturdays, that would be helpful. If anybody has any suggestion in that regard, they're welcome. Anyway, Kathleen, do you have any uh, comments or questions? No, but I'm looking forward to it. So April 23rd, is was that a few weeks before we started last year? Remind me. It is. Before the pandemic, we had started in April, and it was nice to get out there, stretch our legs, the winter markets, are kind of getting old because they're indoors and it's getting warmer. Right. So we're hoping to get everybody's gardens going with lettuces and radishes and other greens that they can put in their gardens. House plants need to be refurbished and freezers need to be restocked. So, yes, it is. It's a good thing to almost be back to normal. Well, we're looking forward to it. Thank you. Thanks, Lexi. I see Patricia's on here. Patricia, you want to say anything? Okay. Hi, Kevin. Yeah, and Kathleen, thank you. Um, yes, is the Lexi's right-hand person here in town. Um, feedback that we've got from everybody who came is New Canaan has one of the best markets in the area, so we always have lots of uh, participation. And as Lexi said, the new location worked out great. Everyone really loved having adjacent parking. So that worked out well. And uh, we appreciate the town's accommodation and support, including uh, fixing some potholes there and uh, also giving us handicapped parking signs, which seemed to work out pretty well. Be great if we had a, ha had a hand cart to put them into place. They're pretty heavy. But um, yeah, so I think that's all working well. And I think, you know, Lexi's trying to get a, <clears throat> a small um, camp um, storage truck or something that we can put all the signs in so we don't have to haul them back and forth every week. But overall, it's, um, it's been a great location. And we'll be putting the sign up again on the um, end of the train tracks there. For the season like we did last year that worked out really well so we appreciate the town's support and pnc support in having us have the sign there for the summer so overall uh it's great so thank you look forward to it opening okay patricia and leslie thanks very much for the report thank you we really appreciate the community supporting our agriculture okay great uh moving on <clears throat> do i see 
I don't Sorry, see Tammy. Do, do, do we need to vote on that? I, I did have it as a vote. You've voted in the past. What are we voting on? Just the approval of of their request to hold it the summer the the market. You voted in the past. Well, I move we approve the request from uh, Alex, um, Lexi Gazy uh, to uh, hold the summer McCain and Farmers Market at the Lumberyard parking lot starting uh, in April 25th. Um, do I have a second, Kelly? Second. For the discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye, okay. So I don't see Tiger on here. Yeah, he's here. He's here in person. Ah, that's why I don't see him on here. <laughs> okay. Um, next item in the agenda is the uh, appointment of um, John Howe as interim parks and recreation director. Um, so he can see you. <clears throat> So, uh, uh, there's no camera yeah. there. Is John coming up to the... Um, I am here, John's behind me. Do you want him to join us? Sure. <laughs> so I am happy to present uh, John Howe as uh, the Interim Parks and Rec Director, uh, if that is approved through the Board of Selectmen. John has been with the town close to 24 years. He probably is one um, of many employees who worked very closely with John with Steve Banco over the last many years. And what we are trying to do is to fill Steve Banco's shoes, which as everyone knows is, is not it's going to be to an do. easy task. Uh, what John is going to do is really, as he becomes interim to research the department, we are looking at how area towns are doing it and uh, come up with some suggestions. So our first move is to make him interim and then uh, we will hear from him as to other recommendations. Thank you, Cheryl. Um, any questions, Kathleen? I had this, my discussion with John and I'm very happy to I hope he's uh, willing to be interim director. Um, so just, uh, well, thank you for uh, stepping up. It, it, there are big shoes obviously to fill, but I trust that you have your own big shoes and uh, will make a, a, a very important difference. So thank you for doing so. And just to clarify, you're gonna be the interim recreation director. You're already the parks director or is- uh, Officially I'm the park superintendent. Superintendent, so. okay, I see. So this is a new position that combines the both types. Correct. Okay, thank you. Okay, so interim parks and recreation director and I, Suppose that also during that interim, um, sort of the organizational structure and reporting lines and so forth will also be kind of vetted and decided over that course of time. Yes, oh, correct. Okay, yeah. very good. Thank you for look, willing, look, your willingness to do so. Yeah, thank you. Looking forward to it. Um, I think it will be it will be a good change for the town having one voice coming out of both parks and recreation. Yes. Um, so I think you know a lot of, a big challenge, but I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you for doing so. I would also note that um, you know John and uh, uh, Jay Egan are two of what well, with three members field committee for the past probably twenty years, right, John? So that uh, um, we're not going to initially uh, think about what to do with the field committee, other than have John and Jay work together. They work well um, to continue that committee's activities, and we will address that later. A little bit later on anyway so i move we approve the request of human services human resources to appoint john howe as interim parks and recreation director do i have a second kathleen second uh further discussion all in favor aye thank you john thank you, thank you cheryl okay are we up to you <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> we have an item up here. Softball. That's why John's up here. That's, That's right. why I'm here. <laughs> ah, okay. But, uh, okay, good. Uh, go ahead, John. We got the uh, softball batting cage construction project. Right. Uh, at, at Waveney at the Orchard Field, there is a, right now there is a dilapidated single use batting cage for girls softball. Um, the girl, uh, New Canaan softball contacted us to wonder if they could improve that area. We've been going back and forth with a lot of different things. Um, we went through Park and Rec for their approval. What we want to put in there is two batting cages and a practice um, 
pitching area, mm -hmm. which would be surrounded by granite curb, chain link fence, just for just to keep it protected, and then proper netting that will last for a number of years. Um, most of this is going to be paid for by New Canaan Softball, the majority of it. Um, so we're looking for a total project cost, including the contingency of 90,000, 338.52. Um, we don't expect that we'll have to pay, use all the contingency, the 15%, but we do have quotes from the, uh, on deck sports who will be supplying the batting cage and the um, and the labor to install the batting cage itself. They're very large poles that they'd put, put in. We have a quote from Peter Lanny for granite kick current, excuse me, granite curb installation, and then Gannon rustic fence for the chain link fence. The one thing of note, right now the lawyers have it, they're looking at the contracts going back and forth. So this is all pending legal approval, but we also wanna be positioned to start as soon as we can, since the softball season will be starting soon. Right. Questions, Kathleen? Yeah, just uh, the replay. So it's exactly going to be uh, where the current um, batting cage is now? Yes, okay. to the east of the water tower softball field. So um, the new the new parking lot up by the water towers, that will be the main location where people will go. It, it's a bigger area than the single batting cage that's there, but it can fit in that area without any problem. Right. And who's responsible for taking down the current batting cage and disposing of it. We're going to do that in house. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We're just wait, right now we're just waiting for a call before you dig. <clears throat> a call before you dig to come through before we excavate the poles out. And then finally the timing, when do we expect that to be in use? The biggest thing, the the product itself is in stock, so we don't have that issue. It's just scheduling with their contractor and then Peter Lanny and Tom Gannon all together. So this spring this spring. Yeah. Okay. And I'm sorry, you, you did say that the funding will be majority of the project. How much would that be approximately? But, um, the batting cage itself at 49. No, I mean, but this, uh, the soft, uh, New Canaan softball will be funding the majority of the project. The majority of the project um, without being able to do math in my head. No, oh, the, the, okay. the town's responsibility would be about 28,000 of that. We okay. have money in our, in our current budget for fencing and also um, the granite curb installation. The New Canaan softballs willing to do the whole contingency and the cost of the batting cage Got itself. It. Okay, so. thank you. Okay, I have no questions. Uh, thank you, John. And it sounds like a great project. Okay. Um, I move we approve the request from the Parks Department to enter into a contract with uh, on deck sports to purchase a two batting cage uh, structure facility, uh, Gannon Rustic Fence, Peter Lunny, as described by John, for total project cost of $90,000, 338.52, with majority of which to be paid by uh, Gannon Softball. So do I have a second, Kathleen? Second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. That's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, John. Good morning, Chief. Interim Chief Bassett. Good morning. Good morning. All right. I saw the rescue truck last Friday. Boy, what a beauty. It is. Then we just got to get our equipment on it. So they're doing a good job of working on that. Uh, here we are from the fire department um, looking to request $27,345.79 for that final bill. Uh, of the rescue truck through the uh, two-year process. The uh, number of change orders and making the truck um, as it was building off the plans, you know, the changes that had to happen, uh, the difference in the cost of construction from the original uh, uh, approved amount uh, was the overage to the 27,345. So that's what we're looking for the, um, the final bill for that. And this is all uh, funds that are, um, hopefully going to be transferred tonight with the Board of Finance through capital. Okay. Questions, Kathleen? Um, yes, thank you. Just the timing of when you think you're going to have it fully fitted out then? We're look, uh, well, right now we're developing a tr more of the training program. Uh, the equipment's there, uh, transferring it over and, um, and 
putting uh, mounts in for the equipment so it's not moving around. Probably looking at a month process. Uh, the training is going to take a little more because of the um, the light package and some of the controls are not just regular switches anymore. It's actually a computer in there. So uh, all the firefighters have to go through that. So it'll be a few months of driving and tra training time. Okay. Thank so you. definitely in the spring. Great. Thank you. We'll keep it off the road in the winter. Yes. That's, the <laughs> <laughs> That's another. <laughs> in the, the next <laughs> item. Next item. So. Yeah, I'll be also a little surprised because we, we've already disposed of the prior rescue truck. So, so does that mean we're operating without a rescue truck right now? Should we um, the 19 or 2005 pumper is actually running as a rescue truck now. So it was stripped of uh, the current, um, you know, fire hose and the equipment for suppression and put the rescue equipment on it. So that's running as the rescue truck. Okay. And extra equipment goes in the pickup as needed. Gotcha. Okay, so I have no questions about the rescue truck accessories. So I move we approve the request of the fire department to enter into a contract with Goins Knight Company for $27,345.79 to complete the accessories for the newly constructed and delivered rescue truck. <laughs> Second. Second. Now, Second. further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. You got that one, Albie. Go ahead. What's the Thank second you. one? Thank uh, you. The next one is unfortunately a request for another $27,345. Uh, for the damage repair uh, to engine one uh, that was involved in the um, ice incident on January 5th, slid off the road, uh, struck a wall, and uh, damaged front bumper and the cab of the apparatus. So uh, this was actually, um, besides the $500 deductible, the money came from the insurance company, which is uh, in hand in the town right now, just looking for the okay to start the process for repair. And is Goins Knight the uh, the Connecticut company that built the rescue truck? That yes, it is in Watertown. Yes, Connecticut okay. company built the come you know, and it worked out well because they were able to uh, you know take that truck. They have it in hand right now in case once we get the approval. All right, well let's get the truck repair. The ice storm was nasty for a lot of people. And um, uh, questions, Kathleen? No, no questions. Thank you. Okay, I move we approve the request from the fire department to enter into a contract with Goins Knight Company for $27,345 to repair the uh, engine one damage from the ice storm. And other than a deductible, it's been reimbursed already by Sir Kerma, our insurance co company. So, um, second. Second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Albie. Thank you. Have a good day. Who's up, Bill Osman? Yes. Yep, I'm here. See? <laughs> okay. Good morning, everybody. Um, 220 Elm Street, the newly acquired property the town purchased. Um, it's a condominium office complex now. So um, we have a property manager um, uh, group who's going to be um, uh, managing that property and what that would be your typical common fees to cover all the expenses. So we're looking for approval to, um, to be able to pay approximately 12500 per month in association fees. Um, it should be noted that we also have a revenue coming of a little over $12,000, um, at least until June, July. So, um, and then July, uh, July will come back for an update and an approval to continue. Uh, this is we own 50% of 220 Elm and um, WFL is the manager who, who had been managing the property for uh, Bankwell and uh, they will continue um, for a while to the end of the year under new contract. And um, any questions, Kevin? Um, thank you, just, just to clarify. So this 12,500 per month, this is up until what point? Just so I know <coughs> we're just approving and stopping when? Um, well, they, they're um, running uh, well, once they get the approval and everything, it should be for 12 months, but because of the fiscal change over our fiscal year, we'll come back in July for approval to continue the agreement. The amount may be adjusted uh, slightly up or down. It's up to the uh, board over there um, to uh, adjust it when they feel it needs to be adjusted. Um, we're going through some warning curves over there, as you know. So what? some warning curves over there because it is uh, partially unoccupied and will be fitting it out for board of that ending. So there'll be some changes going along, but we'll keep you aware of everything that's going on. So. 
perhaps this is still under discussion, but is this uh, monthly um, association fee, is that going to be considered to be picked up by the Board of Ed as part of their budget for- I, I, be, I, be, I believe so. Uh, my understanding was that they're gonna be covering all the expenses once they occupy the space, whether it's um, directly or indirectly, we're still in discussions about that. So it still may go through public works and then it'll be just reimbursed or they'll be billed directly. We haven't got to that point yet. Okay. So. Now the superintendent's budgeting his entire rent at the current rate was more than covers the uh, debt service and this operating expense for the uh, for the fifty percent of the building that we occupy. Okay. Okay. I move we approve the request from Public Works to authorize a payment of twelve thousand five hundred dollars a month. As association fees for 220 Elm Street Condominium kind of Owners Association as described by Bill. Second. Second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thanks, Bill. Okay. So I'm up next to, I guess, the mobile generator. Um, the um, the boards uh, had approved uh, using uh, the ARPA funding to uh, fund our mobile generator. Um, we are following the uh, Department of Treasury's guidelines on using these funds. So it's a lot to pay for. <laughs> so we actually went out for a formal bid and we received two bids back. Actually, we received three bids back, two were accepted. One was um, not accepted because it came in uh, late. It didn't come in a timely fashion. So uh, our request is to uh, seek approval to contract with Huntington Power Equipment to purchase the generator for the 224,382.68 uh, plus the contingency of 25,617. Um, the unit, if ordered, uh, tell me maybe we'll have it by summertime, June, July. So hopefully, supply chain stuff we're trying. <clears throat> so we'd like approval to purchase the generator. Questions? Kathleen? Yeah, thank you. Um, just just to clarify, so the actual cost is the two hundred twenty-four thousand. So, the, wh why would you have a contingency on just purchasing a? Okay, so um, we we want that contingency because there's there's going to be some electrical work that is going to be involved. Okay. And and following the guidelines and doing electrical work as a change order would fit the thing. If we don't, then we have to go back out and rebid all the little work and everything. So we feel that, uh, and they're capable of doing the work. Um, it's just that until we actually got their number on with generate costs, I didn't want to end up having not enough, you know, so I just want to sure. go into this okay. uh, cautiously. Uh, understood. Yeah. And just so as a record, the, the generator will be big enough to operate any town owned building, including our wastewater treatment plant, uh, should that big generator go down. Okay. So we'll be in good position. What, what was the how what was the differential between the second first bid and the and the lowest bid and the and the next level? It was pretty tight. It was interesting. Um, so tower equipment was a high bid. Their all uh, all in amount was uh, two hundred and thirty thousand dollars, and the uh, payment was to two hundred twenty four thousand. And the third bid came away. We didn't open it. Right. Okay. So yeah, it was a tight bid, and it was all uh, apples apples. So they're both uh, suppliers of this particular unit that met our requirements. So. Um, it was pretty straightforward. Sure. Oh, one last question. Where is this going to be housed? Uh, I believe, uh, well, I'll be up to Target, but right now I'm believing it's going to be at the uh, DBW site um, down there. So it always can be taken care of. Is it, is it, is it covered up? Or? It's, yes. Yeah. Okay. It's on its own trailer. It comes That's in okay. its sound continuing cabinet and it's got its own fuel. Everything's all on it. And uh, we most likely will store it near the, uh, I'm thinking trying to get it next to the wastewater plant so that if that ever go down, we can just plug it in. We don't have to worry about chalking it around. And then on ARPA funds, and, and Kevin, maybe we're going to discuss this on another item, but um, just wanted to check if we had like a list, where are we in terms of the phasing? We're going to talk about that with item number 12, uh, Kathleen. The, uh... Thank you. Um, Bill, when you say it would operate any building, um, it doesn't really operate the full needs of the of uh, the wastewater treatment plant, for example. But uh, um, is, are you also talking about the school buildings? I mean, this no, it, all, um, it will do 100% of the wastewater treatment plant in our our buildings. The schools uh, no won't do 100%, and we'd have to go look at the schools to see exactly what it, what it can do. Um, 
I know we can back up the generator that's at the high school, but that doesn't do the whole school. That's just for uh, life support of the building itself. And some switch gear would have to be installed on the schools if it were big enough to do those. Yeah, we've also talked about the possibility since we don't have a shelter other than Lapham Center, which we'll talk about with item 12, that um, you know the YMCA does not have an emergency generator and YMCA would, would be a good emergency shelter in the event of a storm. Uh, that puts power out for a significant portion of the town. So we got to talk about whether or not we would lend the YMCA as well if we didn't have a need for it with another town building or school. So anyway, um, so we'll have this by early summer. Hopefully, you know, with the whole supply chain stuff that's they're telling me right now, but that's subject to change at any moment with the world we live in. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Any further questions, Kelly? No, thank you. I move we approve the request from Public Works to enter into a contract with Huntington Power Equipment for a total of uh, $250,000 using ARPA funds to purchase this mobile emergency generator as described by Bill. Second? I'll second. Further discussion? Uh, all in favor? Aye. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. Tiger. Morning. We have 10 and 11. 10 and 11. The first is a purchase of a sweeper, a replacement for the highway department. We received two quotes um, for it, and we would like to go with Chadwick Barris for 231445 minus a trade in of $65,000 for a total purchase price of 166445 It is part of a source well contract that was a consortium bidding. Um, the, uh, our existing sweeper is nearing its, uh, the end of its useful life at this point in time, it starts to, uh, have much more, uh, larger problems with it at about the seven to nine year mark. They start to, uh, they start to degrade quite rapidly. And we like to, we would like to get rid of the, uh, the unit and, uh, purchase this new one. Um, it'll serve the needs of the highway department very well. And it's in the budget. It is in the 22 budget. Yes, correct. We had a hundred and ninety thousand dollar line item in the in the budget, so this uh, this will cover it amply. <clears throat> Questions, Kathy? Yes, yeah, just curious. Is there has there been a price increase since the first time we we bought the one that we currently hold versus now? Is there new improvements to it, or is a higher? There's there are yeah there was a there yes there's been a quite a large price increase um, for both units both units that we quoted. Um, so without the uh, without the trade, we were the second quote we wouldn't have been able to cover. Um, so based upon, as Bill had mentioned, you know the the issues that are at hand now, um, we're going to probably face this as we move forward on a lot of our other items. Um, but we'll tackle that when they come. Okay. <clears throat> I have no further questions. Um, I uh, will we'll approve the request from Public Works to enter into a contract with Chad, Chadwick. Virus Inc. for a four wheel sweeper um, for $231,000. $445. Uh, we're going to get a trade in of $65,000. So, um, do I have a second, Kevin? Second. For the discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Tiger number 11. Number 11, this is uh, the most recent bid from the tree warden. Uh, we, we asked him to go take a look through uh, the Waveney Disc Golf area. So he uh, marked a number of trees in the area. We received three bids, um, quite a large spread between the three. What we're seeing now is the, uh, the fact that the majority of the work that everyone was uh, working off of is starting to dry up. And some of our contractors are, are back being very hungry um, Olmstead Tree was the low bid at seven thousand five hundred and sixty dollars. They've done nice work for us in the past. We would like to uh, contract with them to go in there and um, take care of this work. Any questions, Kathy? No questions. I move to approve the request from the tree warden to enter into a contract with Olmstead Tree for seven thousand five hundred sixty dollars for removal, pruning, and stump removal of various trees in town, as described by Tiger. Second. Second. For the discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Now we come back to the ARPA funds for the uh, uh, replacement 
of the Lapton Center for Emergency Generator. I guess Tiger left the podium, but um, the, the Board of Finance decided to move the Lapham Center Emergency Generator, which is beginning to fail or has failed, out of the capital budget and use ARPA funds for it, so that uh, for $125,000. Tiger, I, you're the best one to try to describe this more. <clears throat> um, and um, so we're recommending this go back to the Board of Finance and then to the Town Council as an additional ARPA item. And Tucker has prepared an updated spreadsheet, which I think she shared with the Town Council uh, at their request. And uh, I think it's on our tablets, perhaps, Tucker, or no? I believe it is, but she's asking if she's uh, a copy of it. So let me give you my hard copy. This is, I, I just want to be clear, this list no, okay, is just the internal uh, working list of what's in process right now through the town bodies. So that's been shared with Kathleen? Yes. Just, yep, just a minute ago. Yep. So anyway, uh, Tiger, um, I, I, you said that the Lapham Center current generator, which sits on top of it, uh, it's uh, diesel fuel um, tank is uh, knocking or is it actually fully failed? It hasn't failed yet. It has an engine knock in our, our, um, our, in, our generator uh, company, the maintenance company has taken it offline. So they will no longer will certify the generator itself. So we had it in our fiscal 23 budget um, and the board of finance at their last meeting asked that it be drawn out since it's a time sensitive item since uh, Latin community is our, our shelter. We'd like to keep that up and running in the need, you know, in the interim, we could run it, but we don't know exactly when it would fail. Probably, you know, could fail immediately since uh, the engine knock is quite significant. So uh, they, asked to bring this forward so we're bringing it to you and then we'll bring it to the other town bodies and then uh work through the exact same process that we did for the mobile generator for this one okay so we're just authorizing the recommendation of the generator for arpa funds and after the town board of finance and town council function i will be in a position to to solicit uh go out and find the generator I just ask a question. What's the useful life on the existing generator? It's now up virtually out of service, but and what do we expect for the new one? Well, it should go a good 25, 30 years and no one to take care of it. You know, as long as the mice don't have a field day in there and rip it up, but we control that nowadays. So, uh, yeah, it should last quite a time. And the existing one is about 25 years old. Is that right? Or that was put in when they did the uh, Lapham Center back in early 2000. Okay. All right. And it was a uh, off market brand at the time. So it's hasn't been the most friendliest one to work with, to be honest with you. And, um, and just think, you know, it, it is knocking like Tiger said, and my concern is that once you put it under a load or something, it might just fail right in the middle when you need it. And that's, that's a real concern. Mm -hmm. Okay. I would, I, I might mention also that um, I asked, you know, the, we, we have funds authorized or getting off funds authorized for the CHP unit at Lapham because whatever source is going to bring the gas line in there um, and uh, the possibility of having a uh, black start, I guess it's called um, CSP unit, which will be making electricity all the time uh, or available to make electricity all the time. Um, could be, could, uh, if you upgrade it to be uh, battery operated so that it could replace the emergency generator as well. So we'll look into that possibility, but right now we're, we have authorization to a separate replacement unit, um, which would be operated. Actually, that's a good point too. I mean, if we have natural gas coming in, we this, this could be a natural gas uh, generator rather than diesel fuel tank, which uh, has to, the tank has to be replaced anyway. So anyway, we're just authorizing this recommendation to go to the Board of Finance and then town council for $125,000. Any further questions? Um, I move we approve the, the fit, a recommendation to the Board of Finance and the Town Council to use ARPA funds to uh, replace the Lapham Center emergency generator for approximately $125,000. I'll second. Further discussion? All in favor? Uh, just one item on, the, on this uh, ARPA list. So are we going to have a, a full review of a phase three at some point or? No, that is 
I think this is this is phase three. So we're gonna, next item next items we we'll bring will be will be phase four. And of course, the community foundation process will is will be coming back in probably late April May, and according to the schedule they're on. But there'll be a big slug of uh, nonprofit recommendations. So okay, so this is the end of phase three, if you will. Okay, great. Thank you. No further comments. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you, Tiger. Thank you. Moving out of tax overpayments. Um, any questions about the real estate and automobile? None. If none, I move we approve the refunds on the our tablets. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Contracts under ten thousand dollars. Any questions about those? So. Um, Actually, Kevin, either you or, or Tiger, perhaps on the Hoffman Architects, the um, building envelope uh, consulting service, if you can just kind of give us a, the context of that and, and where it fits in sort of the schedule before it's brought before review of the town bodies. Well, it, you, know, you know, to keep the, the building, uh, police department building project moving forward, the, um, uh, the, the um, building committee, had discussed the need for a deeper dive into the envelope. We had an initial um, expert analyze the um, potential issues with a 96-year-old building with respect to the brick and the uh, foundation leaking, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, but in order to be able to proceed with that, a renovation of that building, we really needed a deeper dive to understand the cost of that as people begin to make that analysis of the cost of one project versus another. So that will be done um in time for the, the building committee to meet so bill walbert has, re, has rescheduled the meeting for the third week of uh, march i believe so is is that the only element of the deep dive that we're aware of or what other things might there be still ahead in terms of doing further research? well again this is this this is a necessary undertaking to understand the cost of a renovation right um and perhaps the wisdom of a, of a, re, a, re, a renovation the, the this firm is a rather expert in this area they were rec recommended recommended by both of the architects working on the police department project and um they are working on for example on the u.s capitol dome project right now yeah um, and um so they they are very expert in, in determining the issues and the cost of um, of uh, addressing old building. Uh, the facade. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. No further questions. Um, that brings us to selectmen's comments. I would just comment back on 751 weed, but. Um, you know, we have on the town website um, information. Um, as questions arise, we will post more information there about 751 weeds so that people have one place to go and look for information. Um, and um, I don't think we have much else to report. The uh, COVID testing continues three days a week and the uh, vaccination. Uh, uh, Jen has begun to do our weekly updates so that people know how to get vaccinated if they need vaccinations or, or boosters. And um, I think that's all I have. Nothing I had was actually uh, from our last meeting, just as an update. Did, did we, I know we postponed the annual review. Were we going to do it in another, at another meeting or the fee review, excuse me, an, annual fee review? It was in, oh, in, oh, in well, well, you know, I felt some, we, we, we have some items to discuss there and I didn't think it was right to do it without Nick. Um, so we just postponed sure. it to the next meeting. Okay, no problem. Great. And then the other item on the uh, minutes was that um, we did ask for, I asked for uh, bids on the Vine Cottage for exterior painting. And I guess that's still underway. Do we hope to see those maybe in a couple of weeks? Yes. Okay. Tiger just said yes. That's all I had. All right, I move we adjourn it. What time is it? 9.25 a.m. I'll second. Okay, have a good day, everyone. Thank you. You too.